Hi, it's Dark Fox on T7, and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Today, we're going to be working with basic scripting. So, this is just going to be bog standard using an activator to show a simple message box. Now, I have done this tutorial before, but I don't think it was very clearly explained, and it was a bit of a mess to be honest. And I just want to restart this scripting series. So, I'm going to do a little series of scripting, and I'm going to start from the real basics like today, and then I'm going to make my way up to the really cool stuff that people want. So, to get started I have just made a little test cell here which I'm going to leave as a resource for you guys to download on my website, I'll leave the link in the description. And I've got myself an activator here which we're going to go up, see a prompt for activating the stone, hit it and then we're going to have the message box show in the centre of the screen and I'm also going to show you how to do a notification as well, so the ones that you get at the top left for about 3 seconds. So I'm going to double click on our stone here and there are two ways which you can add a script to an item the first way is that you can add it to that singular item and no other reference in the game no other version of this item in the game will have it only this one so it's really good if you're using a default sort of item from the kit and you don't want everything of its type to have your script on it just your your one thing here so you'd want to add it that way now when you add it it might take a little while to show up depending on your speed of your computer so just be a little patient and you might receive an error if you've got the DLCs installed or any of the DLCs installed you usually get a nice scripting error just click yes to all when that box comes up and ignore it no problem and we go ahead and do script but before I do that I'll show you the second way and that is editing the base items this would mean that every item uh, of this type in the game would have the changes that you make in this box so if we added this script now uh, to this item then anytime I place a test activator on these stones in the game it would automatically have this script and it would also have whatever properties are filled in here automatically filled in on it hopefully that makes sense so we're going to double click new script and we're going to give it a unique name nice long one df127 test script activator now extends object reference this is just saying that it's extending uh, the script to this item so uh, if this was to do with a quest then it would be extending it to a quest or it might be extending it to a magic effect if it was a spell or something this is uh, most commonly used object reference when you're linking it to something like an activator or a piece of furniture or something like that don't worry about hidden and conditional, we don't need to worry about that at all. Uh, documentation string, this is really just for the modder themselves really, or anyone else that might be picking up your script to use. It's just you type something in there and when you hover over the script it will be a little explanation about what the script does. So maybe if you deal with a lot of scripts like I do, and sometimes you come back to a script and you can't quite remember exactly what it does, you can have your little documentation string here just to have a, a little short description of what it does. So I'm just going to put this is a test script for now. There we go. You'll actually see that in your script when we open the source in a moment. So click OK. Again, this might take a little while. So it is doing something. Alternate click and edit the source because at the moment it doesn't do anything. And in the brackets there, you can see it's noted a little documentation string. Now, our scripts need to start with an event. They have to have an event in them, something that takes place and there are a number of different events and the best way of getting your events is going on the creation kit wiki and finding the scripting reference and then heading over to it'll be somewhere around here and it'll say events click on there and then you'll get a nice list of events here so this is where most scripters get their information is off the creation kit wiki and then you just need to know to put it all together so it's really not that bad now in our case because it's an activator we want on activate but say if you were using a book if you wanted this script to fire off when they read a book you could have on read or if you wanted this to fire off when somebody sits down on a chair it'd be on sit and so on so you get the idea and you just have different events to tell you how the script is going to fire off so we're going to copy this one here event on activate object reference ak action ref so the person who's activating it really uh, control and V to paste that in because you can't sort of uh, alternate click and paste uh, the other way is obviously edit and paste that way but usually it's quicker to control and V on the keyboard and I'm just going to press tab and indent slightly this is just going to keep my script nice and tidy and whenever you start an event or you start a function or anything like that you always have to end it so same goes for most things so oh, not events end event so end event 
and like I said we're just going to have this show a message box now there's two ways that we can do this the first way is the nice and easy way a debug way so if this was the only item that we we're going to have show a message box then we can do it the debug way and just type in the script itself what the message is going to say but maybe we want to use one script for a number of different items that are all going to each show their own message we'd want a property for that so I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment but the first method I'm going to use is debug dot message box bracket quotation and then we're going to type hi there quotation and close bracket and that should simply show up a message box which will say hi there and then you'll click uh, prompt a button e button depending on what you're using control or keyboard and it'll just go off the screen and it won't do anything it'll just say hi there basically so that's nice and simple and we go control and s to save or you can just go file and save that should compile successfully if it doesn't compile you've usually made an error and sometimes it'll give you errors down here and they do give you a good hint as to where you've gone wrong and it does sort of mention the exact line down where you've gone wrong so that's quite useful I might be able to sort of show you that in more detail when I get into my more in-depth scripts because I'm bound to try and compile something and it'll fail and I'll show you then so there we go that's nice and simple now we could go in game and we could see that work but I'm going to show you the way of specifying this with a property. So instead, we are going to make ourselves a property. Property is a variable. A variable is basically sort of like a container. It stores information. It could be a, a sort of integer, a digit, a naught or one or one to ten, anything like that. And we're going to make a property which is going to store sort of information on the item the reference that we're going to be pointing to in this case it's going to be a message so we're going to go oh, message property now there are a number of different properties and I can never for the life of me find it again on the creation kit wiki the sort of list of different properties that you've got but the common ones are message boxes object reference if you're exactly pointing to something that's in the kit in the render window you've got a uh, books keys so you've got to specify the item type basically so if we were doing a book then it would be a book property if we we're doing an idle it'd be an idle property so you just need to really learn what those are and mess around with it so mine's going to be a message property and then we're going to type what we want to call this property so mine's going to be df127 message space and auto Auto is going to let us autofill the property. Now it's going to autofill the property if you name this exactly what your message is going to be called. So as an example, I'm going to go in miscellaneous message, oh let's click new, and I'm going to name it an ID. So if you put this ID exactly the same as this is going to be, or vice versa, then it will autofill. It will find it in the kit and go, that's the exact thing I'm looking for. So we're going to do that to make things easier and what was it uh, df127 message and I'm just going to type hi there for this now like I said that's going to do the same thing but what it allows us to do is we could add this same script to another item and we wouldn't have to rewrite the script but we could change the message and we could point this to a different message if we wanted we'll see that in a moment so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to let that compile there we go click off that and then once you've stated your property you actually have to fill it in otherwise it doesn't really know what it's pointing to so as you can see it's default here it's empty edit the value and then you could pick from a list of all the messages in the game but we just want ours and like I said if it's named exactly the same as the ID autofill oh, hold on we'll clear that as long as it's clear autofill click OK and it's found it there DF127 message click OK so just edit the source that's what it's doing simple as that OK uh, I haven't put it in uh, on activate we need to tell it what to do now so it will be DF127 message and it's as simple as dot show brackets I'll put show there I'll put show I think there we go and save so when you put that in that has to be the same as the property so any property that you've stated that you're going to use uh, if you put something in here if you were to put um, test.show 
save it. It won't compile because we haven't stated what test is as a property. So you have to state the property. So chance save. There we go. Let's just make sure that's right. Okay. Okay. Now we can go in game and we can test that out and we'll get our message box. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you is how you'll do a notification. Now if I go back to my message box here you've got message box there that's if you want it to pop up right in the middle of the screen and it requires the player to sort of click OK and get rid of it or press whatever options there we haven't done options for this one I'll do that in a later tutorial but if you untick that and auto display tick that instead and display time I'm gonna put that to three seconds this is going to be a notification at the top left instead it's not going to get waved in your face you're not going to have to prompt it to disappear and it's just going to show at the top left so it's going to be like a, you have entered an area maybe something like that where you click on this and it's going to go high there at the top left or it's going to say stone activated and you can do it that way now the other way that you can show a notification is again the debug way so if we go back in oops edit source so we did the debug way with the message where we don't have to bother with a property and all you do instead of debug message box you do debug notification bracket quotation hi there and you do it that way so what I'm going to do I'm going to get sort of two scripts set up saved and show you the two different methods that we can do it I'm going to do a notification show at the top left and then I'm going to show you a message box that's going to pop up in the middle so I'm going to do that now and then we're going to pop in popping game and see that working okay so here we are in our test cell and if we just go up to our activator and click on it it'll say hi there for our message box and then when I click OK I put a little delay in there just to show the notification afterwards and it says hi there at the top left so that is it it's as easy as that to make a little message box and what I might do next is a tutorial or redo my tutorial on doing message box options so I'll be able to click different options and have different messages show up and also one where each time we click on the object it'll show a different message so yeah I hope you found this tutorial helpful uh, you can like I said at the start of the tutorial you can go and download the resource over on my website I'll leave all the links in the description also to the creation kit wiki please check out my main websites and my anti-social websites and all the usual and please leave comments uh, hit the like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it I don't know why you would but um, that is it Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.